Hey everyone, my name is James. I hope you guys are having a great week. And in today's vlog, I'm gonna talk about Kim and Corey's wedding. This is part of my Inside the Edit series that I do from time to time, where I will target a particular wedding that I've shot in the past, talk about what goes on throughout the day, talk about what lenses I use, what lighting I use, things that are going through my mind, uh, how I approach the wedding day. So anyway, with all that said as a backdrop, let's go ahead and kick this vlog off right now. So Kim and Corey's wedding was at the Mulberry in New Smyrna Beach. It's a beautiful, beautiful venue. I got there early so I could get some drone shots of this place. This was the one area here in Daytona Beach where I had not been before. It was kind of on my checklist or to-do list, hoping I got to film here one day because I've heard some wonderful things about this place. And here I am. So you're seeing some beautiful drone footage now of this venue, uh, like I said, beautiful, can't say enough, hoping to work at this location uh, down the road. So after I got some drone footage, I went inside and introduced myself to, obviously I've met Kim in the, before, but introduced myself to her bridesmaids and started the bride prep uh, from that point. Um, those of you who know me and those of you who don't, but maybe will, will in the future if we work together, I am not one of those guys or vendors that will come in and just do my thing and capture what I need to do and just walk around the whole morning or whenever I start like this and not say anything. That's just not me. <laughs> I'm very personable at weddings. I love to interact with the bride. I love to interact with the girls. So one of the first things I did when I first walked into the room is said, hey, I'm James, your nerd videographer. Of course, that usually makes everybody laugh and introduce myself to them, got to know faces with names, and that way it just makes things more personable. It kind of eases the weird feeling of who's this dude in the room, we don't know what this guy, you know, we don't know this guy, he's gonna have cameras pointing at us. So my point is one, that's the way I am, and two, it's just to help relax everybody in the room. As time goes on, we end up cutting up with each other, making each other laugh, uh, just having a great time and just getting some great footage at the same time. So just know guys, I'm, that's not me. I've, I've worked with other vendors in the past where they just, everybody's like super quiet, nobody says anything. And, and I'm just like, it's just kind of weird being in this industry and not doing that. I don't know, it's, that's just me. So anyway, work with Kim, work with her bridesmaids, capturing some great prep footage as you've been seeing and listening to me talk here. Got Kim to tell me a little bit about how they met. That's one of the things that I like to do. I uh, got to work with her bridesmaids a little bit, got some beautiful video that almost looked like photos, but it's video of them uh, doing their thing. Worked with her maid of honor, I'm getting her to tell me a little bit of uh, her perspective <laughs> of how Kim met, some of the stories that, that they've had, um, you know, how she knows her, et cetera. But one of the main things that I do in getting there when I do, and like I said, I usually get there earlier than the photographer does, is one, I want to capture um, as much as I feel like I need to, you know, doing all the bride prep and everything that you see right now. And the second thing is I like to capture a lot of audio. That's what makes my films a lot different, I feel, from many other wedding videographers out there, is I get video from not only the, the groom or the bride herself, I try to get video from the bridal party, uh, both the girls, the guys, the parents as they speak, and then I take that audio and I sprinkle it and weave it all through their final video. So that's two reasons that I get there earlier than I do, um, is, is to make sure I can capture all that. So moving through bride prep, the photographer arrived a little bit later. By that point, I've already got everything that I need. He or she usually at that point dives in and gets the rings, the dresses, the shoes, those intricate details that, that you wanna capture via, photo, you know, via photography, and usually I've already captured that on video before. So when he or she arrives, I'm usually just kicking back, uh, shadowing them, letting them do their thing, but also capturing you, you know, in real time, you know, watching you laugh, watching you sometimes cry, letting the emotions come out of the day, uh, getting the bride uh, dress on, you know, your, your mom helping you do that, your bridal party helping you do that, and making sure all those moments are captured. So from there, we moved into the ceremony, which was outside. 
And when I was told it was going to be outside, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. Because just the greenery in the background there, I knew with the lenses that I was using, it would make some spectacular footage. And you're seeing that right now. I had two 70 200s, both at 2.8, locked in on Corey and Kim from different angles. And then I was running around, um, no, <laughs> I shouldn't say running around, but I had a 24-70 at 2.8 going down the middle capturing some of that so the only downside to this day and i don't mean this to be negative but it's it's it was in late july it was here in florida and it was crazy crazy hot so i was sweating the guests were sweating <laughs> all of us are kind of hot out there but you know again it's just for a few minutes just to capture their their intimate day their intimate ceremony and everybody kind of just you know shoots inside after that or whatever else was going on um, following the ceremony i made sure to capture the family portraits that usually happen after that so while the photographer was doing his thing again i'm kind of shooting over his right side left side uh, zoomed in and making sure i'm capturing all that as well getting some great footage of the parents of the siblings of everybody that was there. I've actually posted a previous video uh, where, I, where I, I, I think I showcased about seven or eight minutes of that, maybe longer, um, of the footage so that you guys can actually see you know, what, what my footage looks like uh, shooting that. So had a great time doing that. From there, we moved into the ceremony, got some beautiful footage of the first dances of Kim and Corey dancing. I got some great footage of Kim and her dad and some of the emotional moments there. And then of course, uh, Corey and, and her, his mom, sorry, Corey and his mom and, and, and dancing and you know, their, their beautiful first dance there. Um, cake cutting happened after that. Well, actually, I'm sorry, speeches happened after that. Got some great shots of the maid of honor. Got some great footage of the best man. The parents spoke, um, captured all that. And like I said, guys, those are great moments to have on camera as far as photos. But to me, they just don't compare when you can see that event happening in real time so just make sure that if you're looking for a videographer that they're, they're going to capture all that um, get all that uh, one of the things that that i won't say it drives me nuts but it's just something that it, it seems to be the industry standard and i'm kind of bucking against it but i, I don't know brides seem to like go with it so anyway i guess where i'm going at is i just don't understand how you can hire a videographer for say seven eight hours a day they're there all that time with you and then your final product is just like a five minute video and that's it because i know putting myself in your shoes i'd be thinking dude where's the rest of the video at where's the rest of the film at where's the rest of the day because usually you'll get snippets of the ceremony snippets of the speeches you'll get some dancing you'll have some audio tracks sprinkled all through there and then that's it where if you watch any of my previous films, my videos are much longer than that. I like to take all of that audio that I've gathered, sprinkle it through your film, and it just makes mine, I feel, a little bit more personable. So again, just kind of a going down a rabbit trail with that. So after the reception was over, we had the uh, sparkling exit. Beautiful, got some great footage of that, and had a wonderful day uh, at their wedding. Lenses that I use throughout the day, are the 50 1.2 i've usually got three 70 200s with me and usually the 24 70. i usually also sometimes bring the 85 or the 135 but it's usually just those three lenses that i'm going back and forth with with the ceremony first dances uh cake cutting all of that i'm usually on the 70 200 and the 24 70 making sure i've got both a tight shot and a wider angle and with the bride prep of both the guys and the girls, I'm on the 51.2 because usually at that point, I'm going down to anywhere from 1.2 to 2.0 to 2.8. I'm usually staying in that range to make sure I capture a beautiful image for you for your video. So just so you know there. Lights come out during the reception. Um, to me, that's just almost a given. I've seen some videos where photographer or videographers use ambient light. Uh, to me, that's just, a, you don't do that. <laughs> because you can see a major difference between somebody that uses ambient light and somebody use, that uses professional lights 
and lights up the, the bride and the groom during their first dance and it just looks so much better when you've got lighting. I mean, why do you think your photographer's flashing, bouncing light off the ceiling and off the walls during your first dances and things like that? Video, you know, video needs light as well and it just makes such a difference. So lighting is going on during your main events, your first dances, cake cutting, anything you can think of major that's going on, the speeches, uh, even your exit, I've got lights out capturing that at the end. Uh, I, I don't know for sure, but I know most photographers don't mind. I've got a few that I've worked with in the past. They don't say it directly, but sometimes I can tell by their body language, they may not like it. But then I'm thinking, well, you're using flash, so what's wrong with my lights? Anyway, most, most photographers, they don't mind because it gives their, it kind of ups their image a little bit. And they don't have to use, anyway, that's a whole other topic I can go off on or go, go down a rabbit trail, I should say. Anyway, I had a great time Kim, Kim and Corey's wedding. Wonderful, wonderful footage. I'm very pleased with everything that, that I captured and I'm in the middle of editing it right now in post-production. It should be finished in just a couple of days and uh, looking forward to showing it to everybody so they can see um, what my films look like. And like I said, you can always go back, check out previous ones in the past and uh, you know, if you got any questions, feel free to PM me, DM me, call me, text me. You can even shoot me an email and, uh, you know, ask me anything you want as far as your wedding day. Any questions that you have, um, you know, whatever, you, whatever you've got. I should be at a bridal show coming up here in September, I think it is. Um, I'll give you more details as things roll on. But I uh, just want to let you know, guys know, um, that's how I roll on a wedding day. That's what's going through my head kind of how I do things and I hope allowing you to see some of the behind the scenes footage has helped also. So you guys have a great rest of the week. I will catch you on the next VLOG. All right. Thanks guys.